Very short video, um, I just want to quickly show you my Phoenix BT20 bike light. I'm going um, straight out into the woods after this and I'm going to do some testing on it. Um, it's nearly dark, the sun's just setting now, um, so hopefully I'll get, get some good GoPro footage with it as well. And it's a Phoenix BT20, uh, 750 lumens. It's a dual distance. Um, so Phoenix have put quite a bit of thought into the uh, the lens and the reflector on this to really adjust the way the the light beam works. So you should get a um, a, a dual distance beam where you you can see quite a lot of light low down near your wheel and um, just a bit further on in the trail uh, without uh, blinding any passers by or if you're using it on the road without dazzling traffic. So. Um, it comes with a headband, which is quite nice. You place the light on top and you use an O-ring to strap it on. Uh, fairly simple design, it's a classic. Lots of different uh, light manufacturers use use this system now. Um, all the way from the uh, Magic Shine up to Lupine and um, in between. So there we go. But Phoenix made a good job on this one, it feels nice and sturdy. Um, the clamping system's quite good compared to the usual Velcro, which is a bit of a faff. And uh, yeah, it's quite nice. Um, also comes with uh, an extension cable, uh, three O rings for different size um, mounting bars, you know, large bars, skinny bars, um, helmet mount that kind of thing. Now what's quite interesting, Phoenix haven't supplied batteries with this. Uh, they do sell them separately, they do sell the charger separately. Um, they use uh, 18650 lithium ion batteries. It's down to, use, down to you if you want to use protected cells or unprotected cells. Uh, the difference is the protected ones have um, a small circuit board in them which will uh, cut off the power once it drops below uh, use a usable voltage and this will help uh, basically prevent the cell from um, degrading or in very very severe cases uh, self-destructing uh, in a ball of fire so I'm using unprotected cells and um, here's the case nice sturdy I think that's a, a Kujura type ripstop material, very strong. There's the case. Nice, nice good seal, nice o-ring around the top there, and um, also tells you. There you go. Also tells you which position uh, to insert your batteries. Screw that together. Okay, and there we go. There's even a little picture there to make sure that you uh, screw them together the right way around. Here is the uh, the light head itself. I mean, I've I've got I don't have big hands. They're a medium size hand, um, although I do wear large gloves. And there, there it is there. I've got more sausage fingers if anything. So um, yeah 750 lumen Cree XML and if you look at that reflector towards the base of the reflector near the LED you can see it's got a slight roughness that's a, an orange peel type lens. It's actually finer than an, than an orange peel and um, what that will do is will actually um, widen the beam there slightly and um, the, the, the shiny more polished part of the reflector will really help focus it out towards the distance so they really put a bit of thought into the reflector but also the lens if you can see just towards the top it's quite hard to see there's three lines there we go and um, what that will actually help to do is, it'll, on a normal torch when you're using it, you'll see this nice round beam, or you should do. What that does is cuts off the top of that round beam 
and directs the top part of it down towards the ground. So you get this wider beam towards the bottom where you kind of want to see it for looking at rocks or if you're in an urban environment, uh, dog crap. And uh, so you get a nice wide spot there, but it will throw towards the distance. I think it said 158 meters maybe uh, in the manual, but I'll, I'll have to check on that. I'll put up some things at the end as well, which are some extra details. And um, yeah, they've really put quite a bit of thought into that. I can't wait to test it tonight out in the woods. Uh, it does have a fuel gauge. Um, green is 100%. Uh, down to 50%, then when it turns to red that's 50% down to 20 and flashing red is uh, 20 down to uh, nothing. So uh, when it starts flashing I'd probably get yourself out of the woods. Um, or if you're very sensible, carry spare batteries or a spare, get your home light. But you shouldn't need it. I mean on 450 lumens you're looking at 4 hour run time. And uh, 450 lumens is more than enough for most people. And um, in an urban environment, I'd be surprised if you're even using the 300 uh, lumens. Uh, it's got a good flashing mode on this as well, which I'll also test out at some point. And uh, so let's just quickly plug this together. So there we go. It seems to have a memory as well. Okay, so that's low, medium, high, turbo, low. And a double tap takes it into a flashing, bit of a rave. And uh, there are a couple of different flashing modes. There we go. And hold to get out. It does have a slight delay when you turn it on. Uh, that's to do with the electronic switch. So it's about a half second press and it turns on. A half second press, it turns off. But there we go. Phoenix BT20 750 lumen Cree XML bite light um, dual distance beam. Oh, I just can't wait to play with this out in the woods tonight. Bye.